Ranthambore National Park is located in Rajasthan state in northwestern India, about a four hour drive southeast of Jaipur. Over the past five years, I've been fortunate enough to lead photographic safaris there on a number of occasions. And in this video, I'll share seven reasons why I think it's the best place to see and photograph wild tigers in all of India. And if you want to know what the best time of the year is to visit, make sure you watch till the very end of the video. Number 1. Ranthambore has a large population of tigers. One of the biggest concerns first-time visitors to India have is not actually seeing tigers on their bucket list jungle safari. If you go for only one or two game drives and to the wrong park, you may very well leave disappointed. But in Ranthambore, you're definitely giving yourself an excellent chance of seeing and photographing a wild tiger. It's estimated that there are currently just over 70 adult Bengal tigers freely roaming the 1300 square kilometer Ranthambore National Park. And even though much of this area is not accessible to tourists, the fiercely protected core area where the game drives take place is home to approximately 25 of these individuals. I've been lucky enough to see tigers on almost every drive I've done into the park. And I've seen up to nine different individuals on a five day tiger safari. The point is, you're not looking for only one or two individuals roaming over a massive area, but rather lots of different animals with fixed territories in areas that are easily accessed. Being in the right park is not enough though, because you can't self-drive or stay out all day long in Ranthambore. When you book a game drive, you will have two guides. The driver, whose main goal is to find tigers and other animals, and the naturalist, who's there to answer questions and to interpret whatever you find. If you don't put in a special request, you may end up with poor guides. But at the same time, the combination of a good driver and naturalist can greatly improve not only your chances of finding tigers, but also your experience in the jungle. A good driver knows where to look for tigers, how to track them down, and how to park for photographers. A good naturalist can identify individual tigers by their stripes, as well as all the different bird species, making for a much richer safari experience. The best way to secure good guides is to book your safari through a reputable photographic safari company or to put in a special request when you make your booking. I'll discuss this in more detail under point number six. Number two, many of Ranthambore's tigers are very relaxed. Tigers have a reputation of being shy, elusive creatures. So when I first visited Ranthambore, I was worried that we may only have a glimpse or two of these magnificent cats. But to my great surprise, most of the animals we saw were extremely relaxed. Just like in other parts of the world where animals get viewed a lot, the tigers of Ranthambore have become very used to the presence of humans, often walking right towards you and past your vehicle, making for excellent photographic opportunities. Number three, the park has a wild feel to it. When I first started fantasizing about going to look for wild tigers, I had a jungle book picture in my mind. Luckily for me, that's exactly what I experienced when I finally got to Ranthambore. The park is gigantic and has a wonderful wild feel to it. There are no fences, just a great network of dirt tracks running through the most impressive and scenic variety of landscapes. There are dense jungles with colossal banyan trees that make you feel like Tarzan might swing by any second. Some roads lead along stunning streams with crystal clear water or along the banks of magnificent lakes that attract loads of animals. Other areas are very hilly and rocky or flatter and more savanna-like. And throughout Ranthambore, you'll see ancient ruins that add an almost spiritual feel to the park. 
I also like the fact that you can book drives that are done in a small open vehicle with no barriers between you and the animals around you. As tranquil as Ranthambore can feel at times, it can turn into chaos rather quickly when multiple vehicles find a relaxed tiger all at the same time. Because off-roading is not allowed and there's no vehicle limit at sightings, pileups are common and unavoidable. My advice is to make peace with the fact that this will happen right from the start and try to focus on the tiger you're watching as opposed to the vehicles jostling for position around you. If you go for long enough, I guarantee you that you'll have at least a few tiger sightings all to yourself. What's important to understand about Ranthambore is that the area that's open to tourism is divided into 10 zones, each varying in size, terrain and importantly, in the likelihood of spotting tigers. Luckily, they also limit the number of vehicles in each zone to reduce the chaos I mentioned a moment ago. Unfortunately, you can't choose which zones you drive in. They are typically randomly assigned. All the more reason to do more game drives so that you can see more of the park and increase your chances of seeing tigers. Just like you can put in requests for specific drivers, you can also request to drive in specific zones when you book your tiger safari. But not only will this come at an additional cost, but it can never be guaranteed 100%. If you do put in a request, ask to drive in zones 1 to 6, with at least one drive each in zone 3 and zone 4, which are the lake zones. And if you ask me, the most beautiful in the whole of Ranthambore. Number four, there are lots of other mammal species to see and photograph. Because Ranthambore's landscape is so diverse, it's home to much more than just tigers. You're virtually guaranteed to see common species like the chital deer with their beautiful white spots, sambar deer with their massive antlers and thick furry coats, and grey langurs, Ranthambore's resident monkeys, which you seem to find around every corner in the park. The best time and place to photograph these photogenic primates is on an early morning walk up and around the impressive Ranthambore Fort, which lies at the entrance of the lake zones. The fort is believed to be around a thousand years old, and visitors are allowed to explore its grounds on foot. It's a steep climb to the top, but the view is definitely worth the effort. As the sun rises and heats up the jungle below, scores of grey langurs make their way up from the treetops below and up the walls of the fort to where they can best soak up the rays. Because they are incredibly relaxed, this provides unparalleled photographic opportunities. If you position yourself right, you can capture dramatic backlit shots, extreme close-ups and comical expressions of the monkeys. Skipping a game drive to visit the fort is a must and will give you a much needed break from the bumpy roads. In fact, if you're there for long enough, visit it twice. Other mammals you can look out for in Ranthambo include the diminutive chinkara that looks a little bit like a Thompson's gazelle, the strange looking nilgai with its large body and small horns, and things like Indian wild boar, Indian jackal, and the jungle cat. If you're really lucky, you might even spot one of Ranthambore's leopards, which are typically very shy throughout the park. Or a sloth bear, one of the weirdest looking creatures I've ever seen in my life. Number five, it's a bird watcher's paradise. Ranthambore is home to more than 300 bird species and they are easy to find and photograph throughout the park. During my previous visits, I was able to photograph things like owlets, open bills, kingfishers, parakeets, and even green pigeons. A highlight for me was photographing a fish owl with its large yellow eyes. A walk around the fort also presents great bird watching and photographic opportunities. Typically, you can get close to Indian peafowl, Brahmini starlings, jungle babblers, and most impressively, plum-headed parakeets, along with a myriad other species. Ideally, bring a light, versatile lens with something like a 100 to 400 or 150 to 600 millimeter lens. Number six, there's comfortable accommodation close to the park. 
You can't actually stay inside Ranthambore, and most of the accommodation options around the park is located in the bustling little town of Sawai Madhapur, leaving you with a traffic-filled drive to the entrance each morning and afternoon. If you'd like to stay much closer to the main entrance of Ranthambore, book a room at their villas. The hotel has 21 comfortable suites with ensuite bathrooms, as well as a restaurant that serves delicious home-cooked Indian food, along with a few Western options. It also has a large and refreshing swimming pool, as well as a small gift shop. It's the owner, Balendu Singh's attention to detail, intimate knowledge of the park and larger-than-life personality that makes De Villa such a wonderful base for a Ranthambore Tiger Safari. When you make your booking at De Villa's, inquire about the availability of an experienced driver that is used to working with photographers, as well as the possibility to pre-book drives in zones 1 to 6. Things in India do have a way of changing regularly, but if it's doable at the time, they'll go out of their way to help you organize the perfect tiger safari. I've added a link to De Villas' website in the video description. Number 7. Ranthambore is close to other amazing attractions. Last but definitely not least, I love the fact that Ranthambore is only a day's drive from Agra, home to the world-famous Taj Mahal. It's a must-see if you're visiting India, even if you're not particularly interested in history and architecture. The size and beauty of this marble masterpiece will blow you away. Another great attraction lies between Agra and Ranthambore. The Kioladio National Park, also known as the Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary, is a great morning or even overnight stopover if you love photographing birds. You can either walk, cycle or ideally be transported around by rickshaw to photograph some of the 370 odd bird species that have been recorded in this wetland. I photographed kingfishers, water hens, bulbuls, darters, ducks and even the rare sarus crane here before. Both destinations are definitely worth visiting before you head to Ranthambore. Best time to visit Ranthambore. Right, let's quickly talk about the best time of the year to go to Ranthambore. The park is closed for the monsoons between the 1st of July and the 30th of September. Although you can see tigers anytime between the 1st of October when the park reopens until the 30th of June when it closes again, I personally like late November and early December the most when the air is cool enough to stay out late in the mornings and the big cats tend to move around more during the day. The park is also nice and green this time of the year. January and February gets very cold, but March is also nice. It's just a little bit duller and drier than December. April and especially May and June is much too hot for my liking. The last thing worth mentioning is that the peacock lose their feathers certain times of the year. So if you'd like to get those striking display shots with their tail feathers in full plumage, you have to visit in May or June. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video about Ranthambore, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and feel free to leave a comment below or ask any question you might have about the park. Until next time.